I think my dream would be that everyone would be able to have the same good experience without having to work harder for it mm. than others. I think it's really important that everyone feels that they can navigate in an equal manner. With the Sarah Everard case in the UK, its safety is at the forefront of women's desires. A diverse future is a future with space for more different stories, more different perspectives, but the kind of stories I would see, would like to see represented in a more diverse future, just from where I stand, are in perspectives of being as a feminized body in the world. Some bodies need access to sanitary uh, areas once a month, for example. Some bodies have different um, are scared of different things and have different needs for safety than other bodies. A more diverse future would, to me would also be a future that thinks of safety in different ways and safety for different groups of people. And I was thinking of a certain space right next to where I live called Skensenparten. It's a big lawn with a lot of big trees and there's a playground in the east end of it. And it's surrounded by benches and uh, trees and bushes. I consider it a kind of garden for everybody across gender, race, age, culture. Everybody is using it. For me, it's less about what things look like and much more about underlying processes and practices. A diverse and inclusive city would deliberately aim for a more equitable and sustainable distribution of power and resources. It would start from analysing our differences in access to and interactions with each other and built space and make explicit where these discriminate against, marginalise or make invisible um, existing inequalities. What if the, our understanding of the city moved away from serving um, let's say this idea of the autonomous kind of independent subject um, towards an idea where cities weren't sort of built on the idea of sort of productivity and you know mm -hmm. sort of people going to work and so on but where cities were you know designed much more in a way where they sort of sustain and support us in sort of meeting other needs um, including sort of caring needs I think about the Ruelle Verte in Montreal, my hometown. These are green alleys that have been formed by neighbors coming together to take over uh, these narrow alleys that are between streets. And they are, um, they're very much expressions of those neighborhoods and the people who are in them, and they are sites of joy. I just now think, like, what if in the future, like, nature is the one that's, like, totally taking it back? As if you think of us, of human, colonizing the plants, and if they were to reclaim, <laughs> how would that look? It's another kind of intelligence that we need to put to work and and um, I think that humans will be those who are the major agents still mm -hmm. right because we can't just draw withdraw and pretend we are goats mm -hmm. or whatever and have no responsibility <laughs> no. Yeah. we do and we need to play that out mm -hmm. but in a in a more responsible way mm -hmm. that we do today and what that takes uh, that's really, uh, that's really a battle. My hope for the future is that we will, you know, find ways to understand how we are reciprocally connected with everything else on Earth. And it means a lot to start to uh, uh, create spaces out of that idea. And one thing which is, I think, uh, really, really important is that there's nothing in this world which is waste. But humans create so much waste. And then I begin thinking about who is this we? Yes. Because <laughs> I guess that's the diversity question, right? Yes. 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 So yes. who is this we? Yeah. And is there, um, is, there, is there different positions in that we? Uh, there is in, 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 um, in Black Studies, for instance, this 
curiosity about the post-human and what is that? And, and one of the, the quotes in there is, how can we talk about the post-human when some of us haven't been human yet? Mm -hmm. My ultimate hope is for what is acceptable and what not to become much more open and that it becomes more centered on interdependence, care, solidarity. I'd love to live in a time where everyone is outraged that disabled people can't get into buildings or that there are people without homes and not just angry, but actually act individually and at the level of institutions to do something about it. So I'd love to get to a state where we all discuss the built environments in terms of social, spatial and material justice. I think it also is a very complex, um, I mean, present that we are living in, uh, complex in the sense that our different problems and challenges, challenges are intertwined and uh, cannot be solved from one profession alone or from one chair alone. A lot of the sort of completely naturalized um, and unquestioned norms that um, we work from or that architects work from, including their own understanding of what an architect is, <laughs> or what good architecture <laughs> is and so on, that these things are to some extent sort of arbitrary and kind yeah, of socially completely constructed. socially constructed. Yeah. I'm really interested in the notion of embodied practice, that all our practice is embodied. It includes unconscious bias. It includes personal preferences, and we need to always be looking at those things critically and creatively. I think that we as females, we have this uh, very social approach to uh, to cooperate, and we speak about it. We, it is not a quiet thing. I don't say that men doesn't have that, but I know that uh, women have it that we are care, caring for the everyday architecture, we are caring for a more uh, democratic architecture in our cities and things like that. Uh, this, it's not only uh, our responsibility, it's all architects' responsibility. There, what I see is that we totally have to change the way we think about building and using resources um, and giving back to nature and giving back to our companion species. And also give a space for all the different lives that humans have. So really thinking carefully about building anything new, but thinking about what can we reuse that we already have and reprogram it. That whole practice has for hundreds of years been dealing with producing something new. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Bring yeah. something to the to the to the surface of the earth that has never ever been seen yeah. before yeah. and now it's complete oh, way around it's sort of creating that radical uh, curiosity mm. radical sensitivity that radical way of looking in mm. what may seem banal useless mm -hmm. uh, superficial uh, whatever and use that as raw materials it's, it's important when talking about the, the future of, uh, of the profession to talk about multiple futures. So I think what we've seen both in practice and in academia is that it's very much a singular uh, type of future. And it, it both relates to the image of the architect, but it also relates to the structures within both academia and practice in terms of what are we learning, what are we teaching, uh, what are we practicing, but it's also about pushing to some of the established uh, ideas of what, uh, how does an architect work uh, and, and who is the architect. So I think mm. it will require a mind shift in a way about our values and that's a longer game and hopefully it won't come on the tail end of a catastrophe. Mm. I think that architects and planners have a role to play perhaps in facilitating um, the desire to shape your own environment and maybe helping to create those frameworks or at least create the possibility of people finding their identities and expressing their identities in their everyday spaces in ways that are magical. I think, for example, of the of the example of the IBA in uh, in Berlin, the, the IBA Altbau, um, uh, where sort of activists and um, residents and um, architects, planners, and so on came together 
and we're sort of um, developing um, inclusive ways of um, of uh, designing also you know finding sort of trying to find um, find concepts or structures for how to how how to make people participate in building um, their environments the role of architects designers and urbanists in this work towards a more diverse and inclusive future is i'd say educating themselves mm -hmm maybe even stressing the fact that uh, I believe in a transdisciplinary mm -hmm. collaboration, reach out to other groups concerned with um, human everyday mm -hmm. life or even plant everyday mm -hmm. life. Yeah. And of course, also communities and draw on their knowledges. Oh, where I find hope is, especially in the practices I can see are, are, are being established where there's a fundamental uh, re-questioning of who's the client and I see a lot of really uh, interesting practices sort of emerging from I think around many different countries but it's often not those stories that are being told or those images of the architect that's being sort of put forward as as an example of who an architect can be. The kind of man-made environment right the sort of critique that groups like matrix and so on have formulated can really only be overcome um, if the body of architectural students um, in architectural schools becomes less um, homogeneous we are partially diverse and we have always been partially diverse in some ways but not in others and um, you, to find these blind spots is of course really important and I think it's going to start already there because we are quite alike, even though we think we're very different. I, maybe the next generation of architecture students will look and think differently. And how do you open those doors? Do we mentor people? Do we, do we create relationships that we wouldn't have thought of creating before? I totally agree. I think the recruitment to the architecture school is key. Mm -hmm. Like in Sweden, it's, it's even, it's not just middle class, it's almost an upper class profession mm -hmm. that you inherit from your family. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. In architectural education, I think it's about changing the canon. Like all of our courses, our resources, our reading lists need serious review. But, but it's a very important education too. I mean, mm -hmm. you are actually, you know, you, you get trained really well to deal with very complex issues. And you're, that, you, know, you have a lot of abilities to look at complex problems and with the, your heart and mind in the right place to try and make a good solution out of it. And so in that way, it has a lot of responsibility with it as well. And then I think that architectural schools are um, actually doing a really good job because I think that we are questioning the role of the architect. And I think that the role of the architect is changing from that, you know, the, 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 the man that can be the top to someone who is embedded in the network of relationships. And that this is our power to negotiate between those different agencies, different, different points of view. The idea um, of a perfect future, as you said, um, is quite difficult. Uh, for me, it sounds like, okay, then everything's fine, or this is some kind of an end point. I think the continuous um, development of different kinds of diversities is probably a, a really, really interesting um, yeah, notion or task. So, of course, we need to always also be able to open up to that which is not uh, definable, uh, that which is not... Um, uh, rational, that which might be magical, that which might be uh, outrageous or beyond what we even can think. And how do we reach beyond what we even can think? Yeah. And for me, that's uh, the way I try to do it is via, via fiction. I have a hope that we can find a way to actually use narratives uh, as a part of the solutions for um, building more equitable more just cities and uh, and we begin to unlock our imaginations and, and bring different perspectives together around the table from not just different disciplines but also um, people with different stakes in the city and maybe some voices that you know from entities that can't speak because they don't have a language.